Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Blue Licker Shills, Nestle, Source, Peasants, Vassals. I'm a useful idiot. Today I want to talk about the fact that apparently many Americans love Israel more than they love America. There's a couple reasons why I say that. One is uh, obvious in the public arena right now is Chuck Hagel is up for nomination for uh, Secretary of Defense of the United States. And his uh, biggest sticking point right now is he won't swear blind allegiance to Israel. Because that's about what it boils down to. Um, he has been very critical of America's uh, foreign policy connection with Israel and, and Israel's foreign policy in general. And I think that's fair because uh, it looks to me like Chuck Hagel is putting America first. And I remember a day in America when somebody was in our government that put America first was a person to be admired. But now uh, we have somebody being challenged just because he doesn't show blind obedience to everything Israel wants. And uh, that seems to be a yardstick that we need in our government now. And uh, no surprise, because uh, the United States government, of course, is full of uh, dual citizenship. Um, Jews who have citizenship with both Israel and the United States. And uh, I'd like to think they'd be um, uh, have their allegiance to the United States. When I look at people like uh, Michael Chertoff, who used to head Homeland Security, or Joseph Lieberman. Uh, Rahm Emanuel, uh, the former chief of staff in the Obama administration, all have dual citizenship with Israel. So are they going to have allegiance to America or are they going to be allegiant to show their allegiance to Israel because they are one, Jewish, and two, citizens of Israel? I would have to imagine they would uh, put Israel's interests first. That's just a gut feeling. And um, so uh, what is it about Israel? Um, for me, um, it boils down to, I do not hold Israel to any different standards than I hold any other country in this planet. And uh, as anybody who's seen my videos, uh, I talk about the governments and foreign policies of countries all over the world. And I hold them to certain standards. And Of course, I've been very critical of the uh, American government, American foreign policy. So uh, I do not hold Israel to different standards. So let me, let me tell you these things about Israel that... Uh, leads me to be critical of Israel and um, to not show blind allegiance to Israel. One of them is the fact that uh, do Americans realize that their U.S. tax dollars go to support the U.S., to go to support the Israeli military more than Israeli tax dollars. That's right. More American taxpayer dollars go to the Israeli military than Israeli taxpayer dollars. So, so that that means something to me. Or the fact that uh, there are more Israeli spies in the United States than China and Russia combined. They have a history of stealing American technology, stealing American military technology, and uh, stealing American nuclear technology. And they have for decades. And they've not only uh, stolen it, but they've turned around and adapted it and uh, resold it or redistributed it to uh, whoever they want to. And um, then we have the fact that uh, Israel is not... Uh, subject to all the uh, international agreements that most na other nations are held to. And uh, it's uh, rather ironic that the uh, state of Israel can go to the UN and demand that they bomb Iran, and yet Iran has honored their uh, agreements with the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, and, e and uh, Israel has not. They have never been required to sign up to it. They've never even been required to publicly announce that they have 400 nuclear bombs. And um, we also have uh, the fact that uh, these illegal settlements, they've been uh, considered illegal settlements pretty much since they were set up. And yet uh, Israel keeps expanding them and building more. And just recently, the United Nations called on Israel to uh, dismantle these settlements, these illegal settlements by international standards. 500,000 Jewish settlers are there now, and there's going to be more soon. Pretty soon there will not be any West Bank or any Palestinian land to be turned into a Palestinian state because Israel's going to take it all over. And uh, let's also remember that the number one lobbying group in the United States is APAC. They represent Israel's interests and they bankroll all our, our congressmen, they bankroll our presidents, and uh, they have more influence than any other uh, special interest in Washington, D.C. and on this country. And um, then we also have the Anti-Defamation League. How many other countries in the world have an uh, organization or an apparatus like the Anti-Defamation League that goes around the world 
to make sure that individuals and media are not being critical of Israel. How paranoid is that? How much do they have to, to uh, micromanage world opinion? Uh, I'm sure the United States have, has some sort of equivalent to that, but I would imagine most countries don't even bother with it. Um, who cares what other people think about your country, unless you have a worldwide political agenda, which it would appear, it would appear Israel does. Then uh, we also look at the fact that uh, we have institutional racism in Israel. Uh, just recently, two, two Muslims were uh, um, signed up for the national Israeli soccer team, and people are going apeshit. Uh, and no surprise, I mean, there's a lot of Arabs and certain Palestinians who don't even have citizenship in their own previous country anymore. And um, so the uh, racism is institutionalized, and anybody that knows anything that's going on in Israel already knows that. And they should also know that uh, there's no love for Christians in uh, Israel. So it's odd that all the Christians in America are so supportive of Israel when uh, Israel could really give a shit about Christians, and they are, they are marginalized and persecuted in Israel, and that's part of an institutionalized uh, 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 persecution as well. And, uh, and then we have the fact that uh, uh, we really need to question the United States support of uh, Israeli policies because a lot of uh, the terrorism that's directed at the United States is based on our blind support of Israeli policies and the lack of any uh, uh, world support for the Pal solving the Palestinian problem. And um, you know I, know, I know a lot of Americans will chafe at this idea that we brought terrorism on ourselves, but let's face the facts. You cannot believe what the government, what the U.S. government, what the Israeli government, what the media is telling you the reasons for terrorism. All this bullshit about hating our freedoms and all that nonsense. They've told us what the reason is, and this is the reason. And the fact that we have such a fickle, blind support for every illegal activity that Israel does, every atrocity they... they uh, um, perpetrate in the field. Um, that is what garners our hate. And I know a lot of Americans can give a shit what uh, people in the Islamic world uh, feel, but they should, because all you have to do is reverse the, the roles. Imagine it's uh, an issue you care about, people you care about, and then things change a little bit. So try to try and be objective when you look at this situation. A good example of that is uh, um, we have people, um, Jews, who are promised a, a homeland and uh, these these Jews now are all Europeans, and uh, they have very little, if any, connection with the original Canaan or ancient Jewish homeland. And yet, uh, they are giving a, a homeland, a, a nation taken from another people, and given a homeland based on a, a mythology from 2,000 years ago. And yet, the the people they displaced, the Palestinians, they want to return back to their homes and their their uh, former land. And uh, they are denied, and the world denies them. And uh, what an irony! So if it's two thousand years ago, and you have you have no connection whatsoever to the land um, historically anymore, because you're all Europeans, you get this homeland. But if you're Palestinian and you've lived on that land for thousands of years, you get your homes bulldozed and you get pushed into a giant ghetto. But uh, I'm just trying to tell it like it is, because that's what I do. And uh, when I tell it like it is, I have Americans coming after me with hate and venom. And uh, they call me an anti-Semite or Jew hater. Let me clarify a couple things about those comments. Um, Semites are people from that region, and it includes all sorts of people in that region, not just Jews. So to call someone an anti-Semite is, is misleading. And uh, it's also a cliche. It's so easy to fall back on that same old tired um, accusation of being an anti-Semite. It's been used for, for uh, decades, if not centuries. And uh, as far as this other charge of uh, Jew hating, um, I understand why uh, people feel they are Jew haters out there because uh, there's a lot of people out there, including friends of mine, who uh, pretty much blame everything that's going on in the world on Jews or Zionists. I do not. I feel there, uh, there is an insidious Zionist influence throughout the world and uh, certainly uh, disproportionate uh, compared to the amount of Jews in the world and certainly the amount of Zionists. And... Um, that's an important point, too. I want to clarify. There's the Zionist, who is the regime, and the radical, right-wing, fascist government that runs Israel. And then there are Jews, and that's the just the uh, ethnic people and a religion. And they are two separate things. Uh, so let's make, sh make sure we're clear on that. And, and 
As far as that accusation of being Jew hater, I, I take special issue with that because I've been a, a student of the arts my entire life. In fact, I have two degrees in Germanics and art history. And uh, so my, my background is steeped in Jewish culture, and I'm a huge fan of Jewish culture and always have been. Some of my fav favorite writers, musicians, and painters of all time are Jews. And uh, I have no problem with their faith. I have no problem with Jewish culture whatsoever. I have a problem with the state of Israel, like I have a problem with states all over the world, including the United States. It's just the nature of the state. So uh, Israel's no exception. I will pick on them, too. And um, another reason why I know that many Americans love Israel more than they love America is because I've posted over 400 videos, and uh, most of them, if not uh, all of them are very critical of the American government and American foreign policy. And uh, I get uh, accolades and I get garner uh, tons of subscriptions. Well, not tons of subscriptions, but I get subscriptions and I get support. And I don't have people unsubscribed from me. But the minute I post a, a video about Israel, and I've only posted a handful, I get people sending venom and hate my way and they unsubscribe. So uh, I can be critical. Of, of my very own country and their country too, America, and yet these people won't leave and unsubscribe until I criticize Israel. And that is because the uh, Zionist Israeli propaganda machine has been so effective in convincing everybody of these mythologies and that, uh, that Israel has the high moral ground. And that's just, the facts just don't bear that out. So these critics that come after me with their lack of geopolitical and historical knowledge don't bother. I don't want to hear your nonsense. I, I get these comments and, and uh, I get these simplistic, infantile um, rants about uh, how could I miss the point and I'm supporting terrorists and all this other horseshit. You need to read a few books. And, uh, and I'm not talking about American textbooks either where there's just a bunch more horseshit. Um, you need to read up on the historical background of that region and find out a few more facts and try and look at things a little more objectively. And um, and the bottom line is, uh, let's be clear about this. I support America. I support America first. America is my country. And I know it has lots of faults. And, uh, and it has a lot of faults right now. And things look pretty grim for this country. But uh, the fact is that I support my country first. And why should I support Israel first? And when is enough American treasure? When is it going to be enough American treasure? When is it going to be enough American blood? and treasure spilled around the globe to protect Israel's interests and not necessarily America's interests. And why are we giving all this money to Israel when we're broke? We are going down the fiscal drain and yet Americans still want to cough up more and more money for Israel. Obviously they're not hurting. They managed to build 500 nuclear, 400 nuclear bombs in 60 years. So they've got the dough. So, uh, so anyway, um, I'm very disappointed that uh, there seems to be many Americans who love Israel more than America. So there, I've said it. So if there's any more people out there that have blind allegiance to Israel and can go along with 99% of everything I've said, but the minute I criticize Israel, they want to bolt, leave an insulting comment, and then unsubscribe, good riddance. Everybody else out there that's got blind allegiance to Israel and uh, loves Israel more than they love their own country, then uh, I suggest you leave now. You're not welcome here. So uh, unsubscribe now. And uh, there you have it. I'm an American first. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too. Seriously.